Okay, guys, we just went through the P&Ls, the forecast, the actual, the combined sheet, and then very quickly into the depreciation, depreciation and modernization, maybe a little bit flippantly, but tough. Now we're going to go through some pretty easy stuff, which are basically just outputs, but they're really useful for calibrating a business as you're building this model and figuring out does it really make sense. Lots of pretty charts and stuff like that. And then this really cool source and use page, which I meant, which I built to help you figure out um, what you should be doing for your fundraise, how long should your runway be, and even you know help you make some little charts for your pitch deck. Yay. Okay. This should be relatively easy. Sorry, I'm just staring at one of my monitors, which is below my microphone. So it's a little bit hard. KPIs. All right. There are a ton. Remember, you can group, ungroup things here. So we've got a financial summary, taking through your bookings, your billings, and your revenue, all the way down to operating cash flow. So we have five years in this model. And then we have, sorry, Mac on a virtual machine. We have 60 months uh, individually here. But these aggregate them up and they use little sum ifs or average ifs or whatever functions to uh, add things up. We can check out our margins to see if it makes sense. Like, are we making money? So if you have positive margins, hey, great, you're making money, right? If you don't, then it's going to be blank because you're not making money. So does this make sense? Okay, 19%, 43%. The number itself doesn't make doesn't really matter. Like 41 or 43%, like who gives a fuck? Honestly, it doesn't matter. What it is, is order of magnitude, right direction. Like, should you be making money in year one or two or five? Right? So check when you start making money and at what level, okay? Um, are you getting positive contribution margins or are you getting all the way to positive net income? A lot of companies don't make positive net income. They don't make any profits. Hopefully you do, because that's nice. But you want to sense check this and figure out at what points are you, you know, contributing income. You can look at our cost structures here. We've got, we've got two cost structures. So we can see as a percentage of revenue. So it's like it starts out at 300% of revenue, which means you're losing a fuckload of money. And then it ends up being 32%. Your OPEX is percentage of your net revenue. And we can see uh, OPEX as a percentage of OPEX. So what does that mean? It, you can see it adds up to 100%. So which part is contributing to your total cost base? So it always adds up to 100%. But you can see, you know, maybe your GNA is remaining constant, and your s &M, you know, maybe it's getting a little bit larger. Again, it's just about balancing and figuring out like, what parts are constant to, to your to your cost basis, right? So you can look at, you know, check out the PLs, pull out whatever Twilio's filings or something if you are in look at that kind of, you know, so, uh, sassy infrastructure kind of business and see, well, how much are they spending? Well, like, what is their contribution? What is their percentage? Does that make sense or not? Like, what was that evolution like? Um, so you're never going to get it perfect, but it's about making this make sense. So now we'll look at our SME bookings. Uh, your bookings, you know, my default here, your uh, your bookings are basically going to be your 3x, say, times like your one-year revenue. But it kind of depends on what your assumptions are. But just FYI, that's the standard that I use. So we can see what we're bookings we're doing, what the new customer annual bookings are, the R per annual revenue per account, um, what the total amount is. So you've got the, the, the new bit, the total amount, contract lengths. And how much people are paying up front. Then we have the SME kind of parts here, going through like a little waterfall. You're starting, you're ending MRRs, your ARRs. Um, then we have three packages: basic, premium, and pro. I'll probably deal with this a little bit later, but basically you can have three buckets. So you just kind of average things out. So you can kind of create avatars for what you think your profiles will be, because you're never really going to know. So you can say, well, I have cheap people, I have sort of not cheap people, and rich people. And then you kind of put them in buckets and make assumptions for each one. Um, and it's just, a lot, it's just a lot easier to kind of put things into buckets and make averages. Now look at churn. Churn sucks. Ideally, you want to have like negative net MRR or, you know, negative churn. Um, so we can see where churn is happening and when, and it's happening on a customer basis, on a dollar basis, right? And so the calculations are different for both. Um, 
why does this matter? Uh, I'm not going to lecture you too much here because I'm, you know, I'm not doing a course about how to learn about business. But you know, your percentage churn will be different to your revenue churn. If say that you have lots of customers churning, it doesn't really matter. But what if you have one customer churn? It's like eighty percent of your revenue. That's not cool. So you'll see the percentage amount of churn has been really low, but your revenue churn is going to be fucking crazy, right? So you can actually see the differences between these. Now, I have not found one person on the whole internet who has actually set out what these calculations are. So I've tried my best to make them make as much sense as I can possibly think that they should, but I literally invented all this methodology, okay? So if some if you think something doesn't make sense, feel free to change it and let me know why I'm illogical. But I literally am the only person in the internet who's had to do these calculations and shared them with people. Now, we're going to get into the SME unit economics. Marketing leverage just basically says, like, are you making, you know, money from your spend? Or like, what is the multiple on dollars that you make? Okay. Um, we have LTV, so LTV, lifetime value, CAC, cast, customer acquisition uh, costs. These really freaking matter. So look at the multiples of these things. So LTV, CAC here, um, we have on a customer basis and a NRR basis or revenue basis. These are 4.6 and 3.7, okay? Three is what is fundable. So if I see 4.6, I'm like, how the fuck are they doing that, okay? So be at or near three unless you have a reason for it. Okay, I know you want to be a little bit tricksy to make your model make sense. So look out for what people are going to call bullshit, right? If I see 14.5 times here, I'm like, what? Unless you have a real reason. And there may be real reasons for this. But if you see these numbers looking weird, that's where you want to start going through your sheets again and tweaking things. Because this is like the outcome, right? These are ratios on a multiplicity of numbers. Um, we do fully loaded, okay? And fully loaded basically means it includes the cost of staff, right? There are so many ways that you can calculate LTV, that you can calculate CAC. I have a Credit Suisse report on my blog, which um, it gets into some details about how you actually can do these calculations. Um, search for it. But the LTV CAC for SaaS companies is just like, that is what matters and your payback time, by the way. Okay. So how many months does it cover to recover CAC? So if you spend a thousand bucks, right, it takes you 11.5 months or 4.3 months to get your acquisition back on a fully loaded or not fully loaded basis. Fully loaded makes more sense for various reasons, but again, you can get pretty complicated about how those calculations are done. Expansion revenue. Now, you get customers, you make more money out of them, hopefully right? By upsell, by doing whatever. It's one of the sheets we're going to deal with later on, but this is where you kind of make more expansion, account expansion. Uh, SME trials, right? So you're going to have a funnel, you can do marketing, you're going to acquire people, they're going to trial, hopefully, and then they're going to convert into paid customers who give you the money. So where do they come from? We've got the monthly bit, we've got the annual bit. Monthly, annual, they're both calculated differently. Annual one, oh my God, those calculations were such a Nightmare. Um, where are your customers coming from? How much are new? The total, what's conversion rates from total customers to trials, monthly to trials, annual trials. Uh, they should all kind of converge into similar kind of numbers. And we'll start looking at your funnel metrics, which I was kind of talking about your funnel, right? Visitors, trials, conversions, conversions. You want about the trials to purchase, right? Uh, and then we have your car head counts, like where where is the headcount coming from by number of people? So you're going to have a heart, 138 people by year five. Um, professional services. Okay. You don't want to have more than 20% of your revenue coming from professional services because you basically look like a consultancy. But 20% max is kind of the magic heuristic. And what is your margin? Okay, so we'll say maybe at the start, we're hiring people. We haven't quite covered uh, our cost to revenue ratio. So we start out making losses and then we make kind of relic, relatively consistent margin out of that. Now, for the enterprise part, we make bookings. Where is that coming from? Licensed revenue than others. So your maintenances and your POCs, your whatever, everything basically other than licensed revenue. Because the licensed revenue 
in the model actually repeats. Hopefully people don't churn out. Um, but that's how we do it. So we're looking at our billings, which are going to uh, be smaller than your bookings because billings are the money that come into your bank account. Booking is what you kind of account for like, hey, this is what a total value of a contract are. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six streams coming in. License is the one that you really care about, okay? You should always charge your POCs, by the way. Like if people say we don't pay for it from here, so it's been like, fuck you, this is what, like it costs me money, pay me. And they will, all right, by the way. Um, this recurring license from prior period thing is coming from your actual sheet. We talked about before, which was somewhere around here. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. It's coming somewhere around here from prior periods. This will repeat, read the note, okay? <sighs> Right, uh, more revenue coming in. Money, 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 nice. Percentages. Uh, license percentage of total. You want this to be as big as possible because your license revenue is basic and repeating, whereas everything else doesn't. You'll see uh, the contribution is small at the start. It gets bigger over here, at least in my model. What percentage other, which is basically the inverse of license. Um, existing billings, total, total, okay, whatever. Now, total enterprise revenue. So these are the dollar numbers coming in, and then we have some fancy calculations on how to do, which tell you how many projects, how many expansions you do over time. So you can see getting more customers, but also you start then expanding into different phases and getting more money out of people. Yay! I'm trying to make this a little bit more fun. Now, p l for deck, okay, involves <laughs> very little explanation. This is basically a p l for your deck, which you can copy and paste your shizzle into, okay? Really easy if you want to add something else, right? You can just, you know, whatever, um, you know, insert something and be like, oh, I want to add in, oh, this is so slow, equals to, I don't know, you can pick something and be like, I want to, for some reason, put in my SME professional services, and then we'll be like, yay, so we'll just whack in this stuff. Control, like I'm typing across, press control V. Yeah, I told you you can calculate a little bit slow. Okay, you don't make any professional service, but you see what I mean. You can add in whatever you want. And, you know, you can literally copy and paste these values or take a screenshot or whatever and whack it in your deck. I just really try to think, like, how can I make life easier for you guys? And the model is just running away. Um, so you put whatever you want. So I kind of put what I thought the most valuable numbers were into this thing. Um, you got some SAS metrics, whatever. I kind of have this rule, which I teach about doing pitch decks. So I, I run perfectpitchdeck.com, which helps founders make non shitty decks, which are actually fundable by investors. And one of my rules is a rule of seven for your, for your numbers. Here, there's clearly more than seven. There's more like 20. The point is, focus on what you actually need for yours. Now, actually, if I'll be really honest, I didn't even put financials into pitch decks at the start. I put them in once investors actually care. Because what you're trying to do is get them to actually buy into the premise that your business is freaking awesome in the first place. So why let your crazy-ass numbers get in the way of that? Because it raises questions, right? Get them to buy into the problem, solution, the market size, that you guys are the right team, that you're doing something special and you've got this special sauce and then you can deal with the reality of what your numbers are etc of course if you are really our later stage and you've got amazing traction use that if numbers are good of course now let's whack on here sources and new sheet there's basically only three assumptions you need to do i've made everything ridiculously simple for you now when are you going to close your round you think it's gonna be what three months four months okay from that point in time the model uh, is going to tell you what your number is going to be from that future, from that date and time, okay? So you'll pick, okay, so we think we're going to close by June 2017, like going back in time, great. And so it'll take the numbers from June plus, basically your costs, and adjust them for your revenue, depending on a net or gross basis, and tell you how much money you need to raise. So we'll say we're going to raise for your targeted fundraise. Uh, you're going to raise, whatever, 2 million bucks or something. What do we think? 4 million, 10 million. You need to raise 10 million, right, on a gross basis, or 4 million on a net for 18 months of runway. 
So your runway will end at November 2018. So on the base of 18 months, starting from June 2017, your total gross burn, how much you spend, is going to be 9.256 million. Uh, okay, I'm rounding that up because why not? All right, that puts you raising about 10 million bucks. You're going to bill 5.92 million over that period of time, which means that your actual net cost, so cost less revenue, is going to be 3.3 ish million bucks. So rounding that up, you need to raise 4 million on a net basis. And, you know, if you want, you can type in how much you raise. That's a little bit too much. Uh, that's like 4 billion. Uh, four, four, yeah, four billion. <laughs> um, if you raise four million, the implied gross runway in months is going to be ten months. Whereas if you raise four billion, <laughs> you can last basically forever, five years, the duration of the model. Sorry, I didn't even put that in right. Whatever. So you're still raising four million. Okay. There I go. Those assumptions. Read the notes. It'll explain it to you. But that's kind of how it works. I have this cool Marimekka chart, which I basically invented and applied to, to like to start up fundraising allocation costs. But you can see like what the categories are and what the box are and what the allocation is going to be between these things. I think it's pretty cool. Um, you can change stuff, right? Emit things, add enables, categories. It's pretty swanky stuff that I did. Change the formatting over here, by the way. I'm not going to explain it to you. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. All right, so we have use of funds, pretty pie chart. We have a radar pie chart. Let's stick with this one, but like if you want, like use that one. Cool, whatever. We can see your costs, billings, MRR. They change over time. Looks so pretty. And what do we have over here? We've got something with costs. Yay. So what are your allocations of costs? Maybe you want to include this stuff. There's also inspiration, but I just did stuff to try and make life easier for you. Now, there is a double balance thing that happens in this model. All right, so if you go adding in rows in certain places and wondering, hey, why doesn't it actually add up? It's because it needs to be put in here too. Okay, so I'm just going to illustrate for you. Open this up, and there's going to be millions of rows. In the staff sheet, right? I have made a default for like quite a lot of people, right? See, roll, 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 lots of roles. And these are people you're directly going to hire for other than your SME guys or whatever sales guys and stuff. So let's say actually you already have 250 people. I never really put in for like 25 or something. So you want to add in rows. Now, if you want to add in more, you have to go into the staff sheet where you want to put those people in and whack in some rows and then go here and add in the exact same number of rows so that it adds up, okay? So part of the downside of me making such an awesomely integrated model where everything kind of connects together is you kind of have to know how it works. So if you want to go messing around with it, just give me a call get you to help it out. Otherwise, just do what I tell you right now, okay? Here's one of those things which people do ask me about. So add in the rows, drag the formulas down, Okay, because they're links, right? And it should all add up. Okay, if the numbers don't add up, you'll know why. Okay. So if you go to row 386, I have a slightly hidden little secret here, or we used to write called check, right? You can currently see that they're all blanked out. But if you have messed up those numbers, there will be a number there. And that's how you know you've done something wrong. And that's now how you're going to have to go around and try and figure out how to fix it. But that's leaving the source news sheet. I hope that's really cool for you. Again, like that's again something I invented to try and help founders make this a little easier. This is going to be really quick. Charts. Yay. Okay. Charts. You look at them. They're pretty. You can see correlations, relationships. Do these things actually make sense? Why are the little weird little spiky things going on? If you see a weird, weird little spiky things, think I might have put something somewhere wrong. So you look at them and you check them and you fix them. Cool. Now, so those are general charts which cover like a whole bunch of things. We're going to look at another set of charts which cover your SME stuff. So we can see MRR, NDR, bookings, ARPA, net revenue trends, all sorts of stuff, right? I don't need to explain this to you. Okay, there you go. We have more charts. 
those are the funnel metrics. Here we can see margins and stuff. Uh, th those are just covering the SME part. It's kind of the general part. Need I say more? Get on with it. Now, next, we are going to cover the places where you spend money. So we're going to have your stuff, your expenses, your sales stuff, and expansion revenue stuff. Actually, that's quite a lot. Let's stick with a staff sheet right now. Yeah, cool. Let's do this next.